I'm Thibaut Sonier. I work at Igalia, consultancy company specializing in open source software and JStreamer and WebKit, basically. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, video editing with JStreamer and uh, what is missing to be able to fulfill um, filmmaking in the filmmaking industry. So first, I will just introduce quickly JStreamer editing services. Um, so basically, it's a high-level API. Uh, to do video editing with JStreamer. So it provides a set of, uh, just, of uh, JStreamer plugin elements to handle a non-linear uh, edition. So that's the core of the JStreamer editing services. It's called NLE, non-linear engine. And it just elements that basically will plug and unplug um, uh, effects and sources on the fly depending on the timing. So you have a timeline described and it just plays back a timeline. Um, it provides some high-level notions, such as a timeline, layers, which is often called uh, tracks in the film industry, where it's basically like the same kind of, um, of ideas, layers in, a, in a photo editing softwares, basically. Um, so that's, you composite the layers between each other. Um, and basically, I'm going to talk about like integrating JStream editing services with existing uh, tools that are used in the in the post-production industry. So what we have been working on is uh, integrating with Open Timeline IO. So I will describe a bit what Open Timeline IO is. It's basically a project from Pixar that is used to convert from one uh, um, editorial format to the other. It, it's, it provides an API um, to go from one format to an internal representation of the timeline and then allows you to convert it to some other timelines, uh, to some other format, sorry. So it's kind of the pond of, uh, of uh, video editing uh, serialization format. Um, and it also provides APIs to do uh, manipulate the timeline, so move the clips inside the timeline uh, add effects and things like that, and then you can just like save it and use your tool to um, to play it back or render it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the idea is that um, this provides the, this tool. It, it's in Python, and it has been the core has been ported to C++ now, and uh, it supports a lot of uh, different formats such as Final Cut Pro, EDLs, the Adobe Premiere, uh, FCPX file and uh, advanced drawing format, which is used by Avid a lot. And uh, yeah, so it supports like basically all the formats that the industry use. And so if we integrate it with JStreamer, we basically uh, um, become like uh, compatible with all those tools. So that's quite interesting. So what we did is to, so uh, the gesture editing services has its own serialization format. Um, it's called XGS. And we implemented a, an adapter, which is a, the little piece that converts from the open time and IO uh, internal representation to the other formats and the other way around also. So now we can, with open time and IO, convert from XGS to, uh, to any format that is supported. And uh, we can see here, a list of features that are supported by the different um, adapters. So here in JStreamer, we basically have most of them. Um, for FX, for example, there are, there are many like uh, edge cases. And for FX, for example, it's still not clear. That's why it's planned <laughs> in the audio format. The, so the internal representation is because it's not totally defined. But we already have something. Um, it's working, but. Like, you cannot really convert from one to the other, but you still have the information that you have some effects. Uh, otherwise, we basically support everything um, that is actually really needed in the, in the video editing industry. So, um, and all the formats that are, that are handled by uh, Open Timeline IO can be converted from one to the other. So, it's just like really, really useful for us. And then uh, on top of that, we decided to um, have a proper integration of all that inside the JStreamer services. So we have 
a GS formatter, which is basically um, a, an object that um, deserialize and serialize the, the timelines and the projects from one format. And here, now we have a GS audio formatter um, that basically goes through audio to go, to go from the input format to XGS. So, and then we just load the XGS file, which is much simpler. So there is some, some uh, conversion in between, but yeah. Um, we now can support any format, taking into account the metrics that I just showed um, from, from supported, uh, from the industry used uh, authoring format. Then uh, we decided to go one uh, step further in the integration between JStreamer and the JStreamer services so that we actually natively support all the formats, serialization format as part of JStreamer. So now we implemented the GS Demuxer that basically will um, get a stream with a serialized uh, timeline or project from any format and played back as if it was a media format, a media file. So here, the, 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 so you have basically, you have like perfect integration between all those formats that I talked about as if it was a native media, a native, a native, a usual media file. Um, so on top of that, we have the time finding functions. That is the, the mechanism inside JStreamer to detect what the, 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 the data is basically. And then it just like very simply like detects that it's a serialized, serialized timeline. For example, it's, a, it's, a, it's in open timeline IO format, internal representation format, and it will just like use the GSD Muxer when it will auto plug it. So I will make a, a quick demo about all that. So here I'm just using PTV, which is the, here I'm using PTV, the, yeah. Uh, it's a video editing application that is based on, uh, on the gesture editing services. So it's basically a UI on top of gesture editing services to make it simple. So I will just make a new project, import a few clips. So it's quite simple in terms of, uh, of user interface. Uh, you just have like clip selection and then you just put the clips inside the timeline. It's not <laughs> Here, uh, we'll just put the clips inside the timeline. Can you see? Yes, okay. Zoom inside the timeline. Um, then you can you can add transition like very simply, and uh, let's just save it. I will save it in the let's say auto. Yeah, it exists. Replace in the auto file description format. And then also Open Timeline IO comes with um, little tools. That's the file I just saved. So uh, Open Timeline IO comes with tools to basically debug the, the, the files, the serialized editorial format. So here you can just inspect them and see how it looks like in the internal representation of Open Timeline IO. You have all the information. It's quite useful um, to find out, like precisely what what uh, what the cuts are, etc. Yeah. So uh, here I could open it here. Um, can just close, and um, 
Let's just use GST play to play that file. Okay, so here it's just using like normal uh, just streamer player and it's actually playing back the file, <coughs> the timeline that we just built uh, inside PTV. So, yeah. And so basically now you have a way to simply um, play back any file that is the, like a timeline inside any any let's say UI they could be so that offers us new okay um, here we go Okay, so that allows you to basically have new clips that actually are um, timelines in 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 the end. So you can have what we call nested timelines, which means like you have timelines inside timelines inside timelines, which is very uh, important for usual video editing workflow. As people will just like edit one sequence and on one part, and then you have other people. Uh, um, editing another sequence and then you will have like people just putting the sequence together to have the final cut. So here that allows you to have like multiple sub projects where everyone uh, builds like one part of a full movie and then you have everything that is just composed together as a fin final scene. So now we have basically the the background to easily do that with uh, with the infrastructure we have in the just from editing services. So basically what we do is we use a GS UI clip and we just put like the UI of the, the, the editorial um, file. So the serialized timeline basically. And then you, you end up with sub projects. Um, and yeah, you can have like externally used uh, um, files inside GS UI clip or you can have all that serialized as one a big XGS file or audio file or whatever you want with the support we have. So um, yes, that's pretty, pretty useful in many cases. And that was a feature that was really needed because that's just how they work uh, for video editing. Um, so what's next? Uh, we have a few features that are ma missing in GS, and it's basically the main one right now is a clip speed control. We implemented a few things inside JStreamer. We basically have video rate that allows us to do sp speed rate modulation. Uh, we have the same for uh, audio, but we need to offer a proper API on top of that. Um, it's like really something important. Uh, that we are going, we are, we are starting to work on that. And then we have the big problem that is basically linked to how we represent times in JStreamer, which is basically all GST clock, uh, the clock time based, which is just one int. And usually in the, in the industry, people use like frame count to represent times, or they basically use rational time. So I want to offer something on top of, I mean, I want to rework the GS API in a way that allows you to work with both in, in a flexible way. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we started a bit, but we need to do more like proper um, uh, integration testing and to have like precisely the right frame at the right time. <laughs> so uh, in just remember, we also have the notion of uh, like native um, time type which should be like frames, but it's really not there, and I don't think it really matches what we want 
and how we want to represent times in uh, in the gesture mapping services. So, um, yes, those are the two items we are going to work on, and there are many bugs to fix. And uh, yeah, it's working pretty well, I have to say. Um, like PTV now works in very very decently, and uh, and we have quite a lot of regression test suite, a lot of validating um, unit testing. Yeah. And that will be it. Thank you. Any question? Okay. Thanks. <laughs>